Today I'd like to discuss using the swept function with one guide, one section. Now, for most people, there are several options that will get you through pretty much any scenario that you can basically back yourself into. And I'm going to talk about uh, probably uh, 60 to 70 percent of the options within this one tool using a single guide and a single section but I will not be discussing them all some of these are relatively advanced and for the advanced user for the power user if you need to know more please let me know and I can discuss some of these things further but for the sake of keeping this video within a reasonable amount of time um, I am choosing to parse some of the other options out now, if you do have questions regarding those, as I mentioned, please uh, make a, a note of that down below and uh, let me know. And I'm, uh, when I find the time, I'd gladly put together something for you if you are interested in those, again, those advanced options. Now, when we do go into the swept function, one of the things that you have to pay very close attention to is what you're selecting. What's a section what's a guide and you'll notice that for guides I have a three maximum for sections I have uh, let me move this into view for sections I have pretty much as many as I want and just because you can use literally dozens doesn't mean it's the right thing to do uh, the fewer sections the better off you are if you need more sections because you're doing some uh, some aerospace lofting that requires a specific aero profile that someone else has determined then hey go for it but uh, for most people, fewer sections, fewer guides, the better, especially when you're talking about aesthetics. So in this case, I'm going to be making a swept section with one section. I'll just leave it on feature curves. I'm going to pick this feature. Now, because we're using only one section and one guide, it isn't necessarily important to pay attention to this vector nor the uh, what I call the anchor point. Uh, if you're using multiple sections this becomes important and you'll be seeing that in later videos. Once I have my section specified I'm going to go in and specify my guide. Now this is going to be my guide and again I'm just going to use tangent curves because I have these tangent curves, five of them. And you'll notice as soon as I select it it does this preview and the default for how this is swept is what's called fixed. Now the fixed orientation, basically what it does is it uh, builds a, a CSIS at the location of where the section is in, in relation to the guide. And then it maintains those angles of the section to the guide as it sweeps along that guide. So you're just maintaining a fixed orientation of section to guide. Now, for certain cases, this may be perfectly acceptable. Now, if this were, let's say, a windshield or you're running a gasket or something along those lines, this may not be the best way to go because as you'll see when I rotate this up, what ends up happening is I get a little bit of zebra striping here, but as I come around these corners, you'll see that there's variances. And if I look at it on end, you'll see that this begins to penetrate the actual, what would be the reference surface. Now, again, in, in a lot of cases, this is perfectly acceptable. If you're uh, generating, just taking a section and just sweeping it uh, along a, a guide and there is no relationship to a surface, like in this case, then this would most likely be perfectly acceptable for what you're doing. Another option that I have, let me double click on this, is if I go into now you'll notice I'm coming way down to the bottom for what's called orientation method. It's set to fixed. I can use face normals. I'm going to come back to this here in a moment. What I do want to use right now is what's called a vector direction. And what this is good for is if you need to maintain the section as it sweeps along a guide to a die line. This allows you to pick that. And what will end up happening is this section is now oriented in such a way where it'll always maintain itself to this vector direction. So there's no chance for this section to actually rotate, in this case, around the guide curve. It maintains its orientation as it sweeps along based off of this vector. So again, if you have, 
let's say this is a rib that you're sweeping on the inside and you need to maintain a specific die vector you can specify your die line and it'll keep that rib in that orientation so you won't have any issues with manufacture okay so that is with a vector direction now as you can see if this is a windshield this doesn't do me any good or if this is let's say a door opening this doesn't do me any good because now I've lost my relationship to that surface so in a lot of cases what I need to do is once again I'm gonna double click on my swept and instead of the vector direction I'm gonna come in and say face normals now in this case I have to specify a face and this is gonna be the surface once I specify that surface, you'll notice, let me select OK, that as the section wraps around, it stays normal to that surface. So this would give you an accurate representation, again, if you're sweeping a gasket or something along those lines. Now, for a gasket or for something along, uh, something that's manufactured as an extrusion and then just bent into shape, having a die vector as we did in the previous example isn't really important what's important is that shape is being maintained to the surface or to the flange or wherever it may be that you're attaching that uh, section to now I'm gonna go back in I'm gonna double click on my swept and what I want you to notice is I have several other options I have another curve point uh, angular law and force direction what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into angular law and with angular law right now the default is constant and for that I'm just gonna say I want a linear and my starts gonna be at 0 and my end is gonna be at we'll say 180 and what ends up happening is at the start and you'll notice that this is the start it's at 0 degrees even though my profile is way over here the start of the sweep is technically over here I just happen to put the section somewhere in the middle but technically the start point is this and as it sweeps it rotates out 180 degrees based off of the what would be the fixed orientation what would be the first type of sweep that I created so this allows you to make some pretty crazy shapes if you're uh, cautious with your inputs as you can see here you can get this thing to do a lot of very interesting things all right so now this is saying twist three times completely as you start from here and move over to here so anything that you do as you can see this is 1200 so this doesn't give me a complete rotation at the very end and again this is the orientation method that's how the section is orienting itself to the guide now earlier I mentioned this is the start right this is my start point and I know this because I get this vector that comes up on the guide once it's selected if I reverse this and go to the other side now this becomes my start and you'll notice the twist starts here here's my zero degrees and it wraps all the way around over to 1200 degrees something else that I can do is right now I have a scaling factor which is set to constant if I come over here and say I want this to be 0.5 what happens is, is the entire swept scales down to a 0.5 I can use a blending function as well and I can go from let's say in this case I want to go from 0.1 to 1 so here at the start once again this is my start I'm scaling down to a tenth of the size going all the way to 0.1 if I want to make this bigger for instance I can make this bigger now you'll notice that I start getting some odd shapes in these corners because this is getting too big to properly sweep around those corners and because the swept is so powerful it will do pretty much anything that you ask it to do let me reduce my end angle here let me go to 180 and hopefully it'll clean it up a little bit and it does a little bit you can see but again it's twisting into this corner and because this section is too big to properly fit in this corner let's say on the on the inside it's going to create these odd surfaces and again because the swept is so powerful it will allow you to do these things so if I change this back down to let's say one you can see it's starting to clean itself up a little bit 
Now, if you're really cautious with your inputs, let's take this and change this back to constant. You can get this tool to do pretty incredible things as you just saw. There are many other options that I have. As you can see here, I have a section location and earlier I talked about the section is on the middle of the guide and this option says anywhere along guide. If I say end of guide, what you'll notice is that it literally pushes this thing off. Okay, It's inferring that the section is at the end of the guide or this should be the end of the guide and it creates a sweep and you can see uh, it's a big long explanation and it's not necessarily important but it's basically uh, to make it as easy as possible to understand it's basically transforming that shape that you see this swept shape out into space to meet the section or to meet the guide requirements and acting as if it's like a point to point translation from from uh, from this point over to this point because it's translating that swept profile to act as if it's at the end of the guide so we'll just leave this at anywhere constant blend function I'll just go back to constant get this thing back to normal and you also have another option in here by arc length and again arc length is going to allow you to uh, sweep this shape but it's not going to preserve the shape necessarily preserve that shape it's going to infer a tolerance and what will happen is, is these sharp corners are going to basically blend away based off of that tolerance so what this is good for is if you have a very complex shape and you have a million little segments in that shape and you and uh, if the if that shape let's say you're using uh, a section that has multiple segments in it that are all either tangent or curvature continuous and you want to clean that up you can just toggle this on now this doesn't for a tolerance okay so it's going to it's going to up the tolerance the build tolerance on the final shape and then uh, you you have to go back there and really inspect to see what's going on because if you're building something to a very tight tolerance this may not be acceptable now for something that has hard corners the preference is to always go by parameter and turn on my preserve shape that way the hard points the hard edges stay and are maintained as it sweeps along now again I have several other options when it comes to the orientation okay so I'll just take this and go to fixed that's the default the ones that are used most are fixed face normals vector direction and sometimes angular law I've used this if I'm doing some funky bends on some flanges if I got to start at a specific angle and have this rotate down to another angle with this section I'll do that um, these other options you know a point this may be built used for nose cone force direction same thing um, this is almost as if you're kind of using a spine what you'll notice is that you don't have a spine curve available to you when you're using one guide string and one section string it just does not give you that option basically the guide that one guide string acts as the spine string um, some of the other scaling methods you'll notice there's some redundancy between names uh, one of the uh, two I should say the very important ones are area law and perimeter law and again these are relatively advanced and what's nice about these is if I have let's say two different shaped sections from the start to the end or three or four and I'm sweeping all these sections to, through one another like an HVAC person would when they're running uh, uh, the tubing through the IP but you need to maintain a specific amount of uh, area for flow or a specific perimeter you can specify area law perimeter law and again these are things that I can talk about in other other lectures to maintain a specific area or perimeter it does not does not in any way shape or form reflect on the size of the section so you can overbuild the sections underbuild the sections and it'll automatically scale each section to maintain that area or perimeter length that you specified so this is swept one section one guide very useful tools for a lot of people it can be very confusing because of so many options the mon the ones that again that are most useful are going to be understanding what your orientation can do whether it's fixed face normals vector direction 
or again, rarely, but it's there, it's a good tool, Angular Law, and the same thing for the scaling method. Now, if you used a second guide curve, the second guide curve basically determines what your orientation method is going to be. So that'll automatically correct, um, or I shouldn't say correct, but it'll automatically clock or rotate or move that section so it fits it into the two various guide strings. And because I'm only using one guide string here, the other end of that section, let me bring this back up to one, the other end of the section is basically free, it's anchored here, so then uh, I'm free to move this end of the section around. If I had a second guide, then it's anchored down, and I don't have all of these orientation method options. All I have is a scaling method option. So the, the real superpower of SWEPT is minimizing the amount of sections, minimizing the amount of guides, and uh, you know, if you have to use three guides, then use three guides. If you have to use two or three or four sections, then go for it. But uh, the more guides that you use, the more sections that you use, the less freedom that you have to determine what the shape actually ends up doing. And as you can see, there's a lot you can do with that shape as it sweeps along that guide. And again, this is in reference to a, uh, a surface normal. And I can do the same with uh, with this. I can go from 1 to 0.5 and maintain a surface normal. So options abound. 